everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome to a reading vlog and this is gonna be a little bit of a new series because I want to try something <laughs> I have a lot of unread books as a lot of readers do uh, my TBR is quite large my physical TBR is quite large my Kindle TBR is actually like not that bad um, I think I have like three or four books on my Kindle that I haven't read um, so doing good there <laughs> but I have a lot of unread books and I usually set these kinds of goals at the beginning of a calendar year but you know why not start something now <laughs> so I want to stop adding to my TBR and I want to set myself on a book buying ban. I don't like the terminology book buying ban, but I need to like cool it with the book buying because I just have so many books that I get excited about and I buy and then I forget and they just sit on my shelf for years and years. Um, and I'll take you over to take a look at my shelves in just a second. But I think I have somewhere in the ballpark of about 130 unread books, which is a lot. <laughs> um, and I think it's time for me to kind of reel that in a little bit. So I want to get my TBR down and I want to start by putting myself on a ban for the next 12 months. For the next year, <laughs> I want to stop buying books and just focus on the books that I already own. So this includes, I have a book of the month subscription and sometimes I make exceptions for that, but I'm not going to do that for this 12 month period. I do have I think one more pre-ordered book out so I will be acquiring at least one more book that I've already purchased and pre-ordered um, that will be coming at the end of August and this won't count for any potential books that I might receive as gifts because obviously if somebody wants to gift me something I'm not going to give it back to them and say I can't I'm on a I'm, I'm on a ban for the for the year. <laughs> so if I do receive books as gifts, obviously I am going to accept them. But in terms of me myself acquiring more books, going out and intentionally buying more books, I'm going to put myself on a timeout for the next 12 months and focus on the books that I have. And to keep myself accountable, I'm going to do monthly reading vlogs so you guys can kind of see where my reading's at. My reading has really fluctuated over this year. There have been months where I've only read one book, like last month, <laughs> and there have been months where I've read like five, six, seven books. Um, so it's gone, it's a little bit all over the place, but I want to try to focus on getting back to the books that are on my shelf and focus less on buying books and read from my home library. I have so many awesome books that are just waiting to be read and have been sitting on my shelf for months or even years in some cases that I just haven't picked up yet. So I am going to be doing that for the next 12 months and I will be posting a reading vlog every month. This will be the first one between August 2022 to July 2023 um, and we'll just kind of see where we're at. I'm gonna put on the screen here the total number of unread books that I have both physical and Kindle and then I'm going to add in the one book that I know I'm going to be getting as a pre-order at the end of this month <laughs> and we'll just kind of see where that number goes from month to month uh, and for the next year. I'll also probably be unhauling some books as I kind of go through my TBR and realize if I'm interested in the books that I own or not. If I do want to read something different or read a new release or something like that, I have a library card so I'm happy to go to the library and pick it up from there, but in terms of acquiring books to own, <laughs> then uh, I, I don't want so I don't wanna buy them um, anymore and add them to my physical TBR. Hopefully that makes sense, but let's take a look at my shelves. So here are all the books that are on my physical TBR that I own. So as you can see, not even all of them can fit like comfortably on these shelves. And this is a fairly large bookcase. Um, I used to have these in our like living room closet. We have like a game closet, but I just took it over with my TBR, but <laughs> I decided to put them on the shelf instead. And then I have a couple over here too that I want to read sooner rather than later. 
So this plus the shelf that I just showed you are all my physical TBR books. And like I said, I do have a couple unread Kindle books and I have a couple books that I'm in progress with that kind of count as my physical TBR as well. Just a lot of unread books. <laughs> so this will be my August reading slash progress vlog, accountability vlog. We'll figure out what to actually call these. Um, and I am in the middle of Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, which is one of the newer books that I picked up. I think I picked this up in May of this year. Um, and I'm making some good progress. I am here. I'm on chapter 13. And I am planning to try to finish this over the course of this weekend. Um, and hopefully we can accomplish that. But I will check in with you guys when I finish my first book of August. And uh, we'll just kind of see how this project goes. Wish me luck. Hello, everyone. Excuse the Beyonce fan. <laughs> Usually I would turn it off for vlogging or videos, but it's just too hot. So we're, you're gonna deal with it. You're gonna deal with it. But I wanted to check in with you because I did finish my first book of August. I finished Horror Store this morning by Grady Hendrix and I am giving it four stars. Um, it's really interesting. It's kind of a narrative on how working retail can feel somewhat like a prison. And so in this book, we're following characters who work at an Ikea-like furniture type of store. Every day they come into work and they're finding a weird thing has happened. Um, they're finding damages on their products they're finding just really suspicious looking writings and graffiti on the wall. Um, all of the employees keep getting texts that say help from mysterious numbers. And so these kind of weird suspicious things have been going on for a while. And so the manager decides we're gonna stay overnight and figure out what's going on because this only happens when we're not here at nighttime after the store closes. And then, so they stay overnight and horror ensues and this is one of those stories where you're kind of like trapped in the space that you are like subjected to and where the horrors lie you can't leave trapped in a lot of ways and so i really like horrors like that i feel like it makes you feel like kind of claustrophobic kind of makes you feel like there's no escape and it's really scary i find those to be the scariest horror stories um and so this is definitely one of those and um, I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna be getting four stars. Um, it's a really solid horror read. It's really fast. It's 200, it's less than 250 pages. So if you're looking for a shorter book that is, you know, scary, horror story can definitely be it for you. It is a little bit gruesome. Um, so, I mean, it's a horror, so you kind of have to go in expecting that. But um, if you don't like gore and gruesomeness, maybe avoid this one, but like if you like horror, you probably like that stuff too. So. <laughs> uh, and if you don't like horror, this probably isn't the book for you. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Another really great Grady Hendrix book. I've read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Um, I also gave it four stars. Um, and I have one more of his books on my TBR, which I'll probably read in the fall at some point. But really enjoyed Horror Store, four stars. One book for August and one book for this project is done. <laughs> I do know which book that I'm going to pick up next, and that is The Hotel Nantucket by Elin Hildebrand, which I started last month. Put it down. I don't know why I put it down. I just kind of wasn't in a reading mood last month. Um, but I really like Elin Hildebrand. I feel like her covers are a little misleading, the way her books are marketed. It makes me feel like this is like, I don't know, like a mom beach read. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, but just like this does not give me a vibe of like I want to pick up this book personally. But I read Summer of 69 last year and really enjoyed it. I got it for free out of a free little library um, and was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> um, and so I really wanted to pick this one up too. It's about the kind of hospitality industry in uh, Nantucket which is on the coast of Massachusetts and kind of talks about like that culture of like owning and running hotels, b and -Bs, that kind of stuff in that area in the summertime. Like obviously that's peak season for New England coast. Um, so it talks about that, talks about the different people that work at the Hotel Nantucket, 
Um, and there's also a ghost involved, so a little bit spookiness in here. Um, I am currently 102 pages in, really enjoying it. I feel like Elin Hildebrand has like a really like fun way of storytelling, and I think she does a great job of making her uh, characters really dynamic, um, and I appreciate that. She gives them flaws. Um, she gives them growth throughout her story. Um, so I really enjoy Elin Hildebrand. If you've skipped over her books before because of her covers like I did in the past, I would recommend giving one a shot. She has a billion of them. <laughs> and I'm excited to continue this one, um, especially as we head into the end of summer here. I feel like this is a good time to read a book like this of enjoying the summer in New England which is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Good evening. I am happy to report that I have just finished my second book of August, and that is The Hotel Nantucket by Elin Hildebrand. Really enjoyed it. This girl just came running over with a stick. I'm playing with your stick. Good girl. What do you got? What do you got? Hi, sweetie. <laughs> She's got a zoomies. Anyway, um, this book is totally a love letter to Nantucket. Um, Elin Hildebrand, I think either she grew up in Nantucket or grew up going to Nantucket, or she has really deep connections with Nantucket, um, which if you don't know is an island uh, about 30 miles out to sea off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Um, and it's a very popular summer um, vacation destination for a lot of people. But this is about a uh, hotel on Nantucket called the Hotel Nantucket that is being like refurbished. It was bought by a new owner um, and relaunched by a cast of characters that make up the hotel staff. And their main mission is to get a five key review from this really popular um, hotel review site. The reviewer that runs the site does not give out five keys. Um, it's not something that she's ever done before, but the new owner of the hotel wants the staff to achieve that. And so it's kind of their mission to get that five key review. But, you know, as the summer progresses, we learn more about the characters, they build relationships with one another, um, the general manager is kind of bouncing back from um, her long-term partner cheating on her in a very public manner. We have a couple of uh, folks who grew up on the island who are working at the hotel and um, they have a history there. There's also a ghost who lives at the hotel. Um, she was murdered a hundred years prior at the hotel um, and has been haunting the hotel ever since because her story hasn't been told. And so she lingers around the many changes to the hotel. Um, and so as this hotel is reopening in its newest iteration, she's around trying to get her story told as well. So it's a really interesting take. Um, uh, there's a lot to this book. There's lots going on, but very, very interesting. Really loved all the characters, really had a good time reading this. Um, it's one of those that like sucks you right in and you just want to keep reading it because you just want to know what's happening to all the characters, um, which I really love. I really love a character driven story and especially when it's an ensemble cast. I really appreciate that. So really liked this one, giving it four stars. Again, I have really liked Elin Hildebrand. This is only my second Elin Hildebrand, um, but I really like her stuff. And if you haven't given her stuff a go because you were hesitant about you know, the fact that it's a beach read and it's kind of like marketed that way, um, definitely give one a chance because there's a lot to them. It's a lot more than just like an easy breezy kind of beach read. Um, there, there's more to it. So, and this one is exactly the same. So give it a shot. Hello, I totally forgot to vlog this, but I did finish book number three of August, which was Upgrade by Blake Crouch. And unfortunately I didn't really like this book. Um, I am a big fan of Blake Crouch. I really loved Dark Matter and I really loved Recursion, so I had high hopes for this one. But I think this one got a little bit too technical for my two brain cells to really follow. Um, it has to do with like genetics 
and DNA and like everything that has to do with that. It's a lot of technical terms, which I don't have a science brain <laughs> per se. <laughs> so I lost interest pretty quickly and the action slash character development, I didn't really care about as much as I did in the other two. So I ended up giving this two stars and I, it breaks my heart to do it because I really like Blake Crouch. I probably will still read Blake Crouch because his other two books that I've read have been five star favorite books of mine, but I just didn't really like this one, unfortunately. But you know, sometimes that happens. So two stars, but I have a third book done for the month of August, which is great. We have about a week-ish left of the month. Um, so I'm hoping I can at least read one more book, um, but we'll see. Uh, but the book I'm picking up right now, I'm about to take Snow and a Walk, so I'm gonna start a new book. And I'm gonna pick up this book called Love, Lists, and Fancy Ships by Sarah Brunder Ruiz, which I got at Barnes & Noble a couple of months ago with birthday money. I actually think I have a vlog of me picking this up, so I'll put that up in the corner for you guys. But I've been needing kind of something a little bit more lighthearted. I've been reading a lot of like thrillery type books, um, and so I'm looking for something a little bit more lighthearted, so hopefully I'll like this. And it's coming to the end of the summer too, so hopefully this will bring some summer vibes, which I'm not ready to say bye to summer yet. I don't want it to be winter again. <laughs> Why do we live here? Hello, we have reached the end of August and I did finish one more book in the month of August and that was Love Lists and Fancy Ships by Sarah Grunder Ruiz. I think I'm saying her name right. Apologies if you can hear my dog munching on her kibble. It's breakfast time in this household. But anyway, I finished this up last night on the 31st of August and I'm gonna give it three stars. I was really excited about this book because it's a rom-com. It's about a woman about to turn 30 and she's trying to complete this list of 30 things to do before I turn 30. Um, she works on a, a yacht as a stewardess um, and it just seemed like it would be a really fun summer read. But the reason why I feel a little duped by this book is because I was really excited about on the back cover, it said one of the items on this main character's list was to run a marathon. As you all know, that's one of my, you know, hobbies is running and specifically running marathons. And I really love reading books, especially like fiction about runners. And uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's not in the book. It ends up being running a marathon in a very untraditional sense. Essentially, she doesn't run. <laughs> so I was like really like disappointed by that. <laughs> Especially because it's on the back cover. It's like run a marathon. Um, and so that's, and that's like a major reason why I picked this book up. There is a grief storyline here. Um, it is really centered around um, the loss of the main character's nephew. Um, and that was kind of difficult for me to read as somebody who is currently experiencing a loss. Um, I recently lost my grandmother. Um, so reading a book about grief so soon after that probably wasn't the smartest idea because it, it was just really difficult to read. Um, I've realized about myself that I read a lot of books that deal with grief for some reason. <laughs> I just like gravitate towards them, especially like contemporary books. I feel like there's always some kind of grief storyline that I pick up. But anyway, that was a little bit difficult for me to read. Um, so just content warning if that's something that you're also experiencing or have a hard time reading. But I think it handles the grief storyline pretty well. And then in terms of like the rom-com aspect of it, I didn't really get like swoony around the two romantic leads. I actually was more interested in the best friends romantic interests. And I know that there is a second book out with that character centered around it's a companion novel and it's like surrounding her, her love life. 
but like the two romantic leads I feel like you should feel like really invested in their relationship if it's a rom-com and I just like didn't <laughs> feel invested at all and I thought it was like kind of forced but anyway I I'm gonna give this three stars um it was entertaining enough um but it's not something that I would consider a favorite and I don't really think I'd want to continue on with this companion novel series because I just I, I don't know I didn't connect with this as well as I would hope to. And that marathon thing really bothered me. <laughs> so that brings me to the end of my August reading. Um, I managed to finish four books off of my TBR this month, which is really exciting. I finished Horror Store, which I gave four stars. I finished The Hotel Nantucket by Elin Hildebrand, which I also gave four stars. I gave Upgrade by Blake Crouch two stars. I'm very disappointed about that fact. <laughs> Probably one of my more disappointing reads of the year. And I read Love, Lists, and Fancy Ships by Sarah Grunder Ruiz, and I gave it three stars. I also listened to one audiobook from the library this month, and that was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave, and I ended up giving that one two stars as well. Not my favorite mystery. I know it was really popular in the last year. It has been really popular in the last year, um, but I didn't really care for it too much, so I gave that one two stars. So overall, for the month of August, I read four of my own TBR books and one library book. I figured I'd also include what library books I read throughout this project so we can kind of keep track of how many non-TBR books I'm reading from the library. I also did receive the pre-order that I talked about at the beginning of this video which in theory if I don't receive any like book related gifts over the next year this will be the last new book added to my TBR. <laughs> until next August. So let's open it up. This is the new Taylor Jenkins Reid, Carrie Soto is back. I don't really know too much about it. I just know that it has to do with like a tennis star, um, which I'm interested in reading about. Obviously Taylor Jenkins Reid is a booktube darling. We love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really love her work. Um, so I'm excited to tuck into this one um, probably in the next couple of months or so. Taylor Jenkins Reid is great at telling a story. She's great at building characters. So this is definitely one that I'll want to prioritize over the next couple of months or so. So all that being said, on the screen I'm going to put what my TBR number was at the beginning of the month and I'm including this pre-order <laughs> in that number because I knew it was gonna be part of my TBR at some point this month. And I will compare that to what it is now as of September 1st when I'm recording this clip. Here's the amount of TBR books that I read in, during the month of August and here is how many total <laughs> that I've read during this project. Should be the same number because this is the first month I'm doing this. Here are the amount of library books that I've read and the total of library books for this project which again should be the same. I'll also include the amount of books that I have acquired since the start of this journey. Because I'm counting my pre-order in my original number at the start of this month, I'm gonna congratulate myself and say I had zero new books added to my TBR <laughs> this month. So feeling good about that. And it's also gonna be zero for the entirety of the project so far. <laughs> so we're good on all fronts. Really happy about how everything's going thus far. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this month's reading vlog, TBR, book buying ban, I don't know what to call this project. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. I will see you guys next month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys again in the next one. Bye.